Um, don't stop believing. Because it's gotta be a little bit cliche and dramatic, but you gotta just keep pushing on. And that's gonna set the theme for the whole thing. <laughs> Musically inspiring? I think the most, honestly, the most musically inspiring place I've ever been is home. Um, and that's where I've done my best writing. Uh, I've never really, there are certain points in my life where I wasn't really involved in my music or taking it quite seriously until I moved back home for the last time. So it's only been more recently and a lot of that has come from my ties to my family and my home. I think what I'm doing right now, pursuing music, trying to become successful enough that I'm famous, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> Not that I seek fame, just that I want that level of success. Inside a book? Oh. You can't steal this crown. Avatar. <laughs> All day. <laughs> All day. That's not a book, but the movie. Like, I'm obsessed with Pandora. If I could just go live in Pandora, Is I'd be there. Right. Yeah, because they have it right. The way that they treat their, their, their planet, the way that they treat nature, and the respect that they give it, and the way that they acknowledge each other and treat each other, and just being so connected to nature. I like, I, I'm obsessed with nature myself and I spend a lot of time in it. And I just think that that, that movie has a lot to teach us. I think it's, it's so far, it's been the smaller moments that I get to have with people where I get to make those connections. And the person who is in the crowd is seeing me just blown away and telling me that, you know, Nashville is where I belong. Um, I think that that gives me quite a high and quite a reassurance that I'm on the right path. But uh, I mean, playing at Horseshoe Tavern in Toronto was a highlight of my career. But I think any time that somebody looks at me and they truly see what I have to offer and believe in me, that that's the greatest high that I've received in music so far. Lows is just when, you know, you're just not getting anything back from the crowd. <laughs> no, I'm just always trying to create the right environment. And if I can't get myself into the right state of mind and the right environment, then I won't bother to even try a lot of the times. Because for me, songwriting is not an easy thing. I, I have no problem writing books. And for me, that that writing style is just as simple as a coffee. Uh, but uh, songwriting kind of hits when it wants to sometimes, and you have to take notes, and I do that. I text myself different things. But um, as far as rituals for songwriting, I think you just gotta allow yourself to write garbage and, and have no expectations about what comes off the pen. And sometimes there's something to work with, Sometimes there isn't, and sometimes a song will come out in one foul swoop, uh, but you just never know. It's kind of, it does its own thing for me, so. I would go back to Bali and just hang. <laughs> it's the most peaceful place that I've ever been, and the people are so kind, so happy. And it's just, yeah, it was a life-changing experience for me and I can't wait to go back one day. How do they absorb music culture? Is it a big part of the culture? It actually is. Every single night of the week, it doesn't matter where you go, there's live music playing somewhere. There's a huge live music scene in Bali. I actually live performed there. I got up and sang it. I can't remember what song it was, but the last night that I was there, there was a band playing and I got up and sang a song with them. And I, I, I can't remember what song it was. But yeah, yeah. 
So it's a friend of mine back home uh, who just basically saw in me my ability and what I had to offer and my talent maybe before I did and started to kind of invest in me and push me and guide me to pursue music as a career and help support me to get the equipment, things like that, to start doing it. And I almost did it for that person um, until I caught the bug. And then I was like, oh, and then music just like, it was like a light, like, like a light switch and it just flicked on in my head and all of a sudden it took over my life. So without that person really pushing me to pursue live performing and helping me do that, I don't know. I don't know where I would be. Uh, I don't know if I'd be here right now. Yeah, that's a great question. That's something I'm still trying to master myself. Um, it's always a balance and you're forever trying to like stay close to that medium line and not deviate too far away but it's always uh sometimes i'm really good about the balance and getting to the gym but it helps that i work in a gym and i am an active health and wellness professional so um that keeps me in the right environment to stay healthy and fit I don't know if it's quirky, but I absolutely am obsessed with gardening and I'm really good at it for some reason and drawing. I draw um, just and I just seem to have a natural knack for doing it. Um, but writing, I guess I don't talk about my writing as much too, like the fact that I wrote a book. Is, uh, and you find those hobbies help you maintain a health balance in your life too? Like as a, as a way to de-stress or maybe just move away from thinking about music or whatever's going on at the time? Yeah, they're all like sort of meditative. I color a lot too. I have just about every Sharpie color known to man. Um, I guess that's kind of quirky. <laughs> um, I just find it very meditative. And it's something that I can, anything that allows me to just immediately see the, the satisfaction of what I've just done. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I love it. <laughs> so it, I have to like it. I don't care what anyone else thinks. It's whatever is truest to me. Um, and. I, I, I know nothing beyond that because I've taught myself how to do everything that I do. I've never had guitar lessons. I've never had vocal lessons. I've never worked with a songwriter, nothing. So I just go off of pure what I know from listening or seeing and just piece it together and put my own spin on it. I think playing this song that's about, that's been released uh, today, 10, oh I can't say that, the song uh, 10 Foot 2 um, is so personal to me, but when I play it live and other people see and think of their loved ones through those words, I think that's pretty meaningful because it's I have such a connection to the song that to see other people connect to it as well is very heartwarming but as far as somebody's reaction or I think anybody being moved up being at a songwriter circle and again playing the song 10 foot 2 for the first time for anyone else other than myself and I had my eyes closed most of the time that I was singing it. And when I opened my eyes, there was about five or six grown men crying all around me. <laughs> and that was touching. But, it, but yeah, that was pretty heartfelt.